is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Alleluia and amen. Dear content Christians, we have so many expressions about money. Some are good and some not too good. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Opine Benjamin Franklin, as well as a penny saved is a penny earned. Not so good, get rich quick schemes, or a fool and his money soon go separate ways. Some true, money doesn't grow on trees. Money talks. Here's my two cents worth. You got to spend money to make money. True enough. Cash is king. Don't throw good money after bad. Time is money. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't be a penny pincher. Get more bang for your buck. Squeeze the most out of every dollar. He's rolling in money. They nickel and dime you to death. Money makes the world go round. Okay, you're tired of it already. Um, is it that money plays such a big part of everyday life? Probably. Everyday life in, in every country. Um, everyday life, uh, you know, particularly as, as you grow out of childhood. Or is it that people want more money? So that's all they can think about. They worry about money. We like things money buys. Now, everyone knows money can't buy happiness, but it sure is a good rental with it. Um, people think, we think money means security and safety, and the more we have, the less worry and less stress. But that's not true. It's not what the Bible says. It's not what life indicates. In fact, uh, we have to admit um, that we have sinned against God more than once. Jesus says, no servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or we, he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. I'll add, if I may, at the same time. You cannot serve both God and money. It's impossible. Sometimes, though, we ask sinned against this command of God. And St. Paul says in today's second reading, people who want to get rich don't buy happiness, but fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. Money is neutral. It's a thing. It's even a gift from God, and it's necessary. At least in this country, it is. But the love of money, now that's sinful. That, that's uh, the root of all kinds of evil. Harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Wait, I thought it was going to be the opposite. No, the love of money is, is, a ter is a root of all kinds of evil, yet money itself is even a good gift from a loving God. The love of money, though, is a tool Satan uses to drive you away from God. It is used by Satan to make you really unhappy, to make you a miserable miser, maybe like Ebenezer Scrooge, to divide families, uh, divide uh, communities, divide nations, uh, divide and uh, end friendships. The love of money chokes, weakens, and even kills Christian faith, which is the worst of all. It's hard to believe, but in the first century, Paul said, some people eager for money have wandered from the Christian faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. Aside from being apart from Christendom, what many griefs do people pierce themselves with who are too eager for money? Well, 
in, in Christianity, your circles are always expanding, your universe is expanding, uh, your love grows, and uh, cheer and happiness, you know, begin to fill your life. But those who pierce themselves with many griefs, who, who left that, who left God, eager for money, well, their universe shrinks, their circle of friends diminishes, they become internalized and selfish misers, like I said earlier. So their universe collapses in on themselves, as long as they have those, that gold and silver. So where's the middle ground? Well, Paul says, um, Godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and shelter, we will be content with that. So the scripture talks about contentment, peace, tranquility, happiness, you know, things that money can't buy, satisfactions. We all want those things. And he says, well, I understand life and eternal life. Life is one thing, eternal life is also another, they do overlap. But he said the rich man and the poor man both come into the world naked, with nothing. They both leave the world with nothing. So if we have food and shelter, we'll be content with that. And, and then, then we plead to Jesus, well, you know, food and shelter in the U.S. of A. isn't exactly... Uh, you know, um, inexpensive. Uh, you know, Lord, have you been to the Jewel lately? Have you, uh, you know, shelter? I mean, the house is nothing but money and, and our car, we need shelter for travel and, and those are expensive and fuel and everything else. And, and the Lord says, yes, I know. And, and, but I will give you what you need because if you love God, you will also get money. But if you love money, you won't get God. And that's why Jesus said, no servant can serve two masters. Hate the one, love the other. Devoted to the one, despise the other. It's impossible. You cannot serve both God and money. But by serving God, he also is going to give, make us content with food and shelter. Of course, contentment is also um, a, a slippery fish, is it not? It is something hard to attain. Um, being, being, being satisfied or, or content. Uh, I don't know why Adam and Eve weren't content in paradise. I mean, they had everything for free at the foot of their door every day. If we have food and clothing, we will be con Okay, they didn't have clothing, they were naked. Fine. Uh, they didn't, you know, they, they were unashamed. But, you know, they had the shelter of God's angels and the shelter of God's presence in the Garden of Eden. And yet, there was one thing they couldn't have. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They couldn't eat from that tree. And so the devil goes right to that and, and, and tries to appeal to the lust of the flesh of Adam and Eve. And it worked made them discontent, made them want more. Promise you'll be like God, your eyes will be open to good and evil, which fortunately they were, and they, they broke God's law. Well, if you can't be content in, content in paradise, where can you be content? Well, maybe in, uh, if you were an Israelite in the Old Testament, where you, you could see God's visible presence in the fire and in the cloud and the thunder, in, in the booming voice, in the, in the smoke that filled the temple, uh, in the Ark of the Covenant, and, and you could see God part seas or do miracles. You would get manna from heaven every day, right to your doorstep, and bird, quail, every day. You'd be content with that, correct? The children of Israel were not content with that, or with the word of God. They, as soon as Moses went to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, they turned their back on Moses. Well, God killed him, 
and we want to go back to Egypt, and we're not content with the promised land. God got very, very angry with them. And some were plunged into ruin and destruction and even damnation. They are on the spot. Well, okay, what about our American culture that says life is unfair? How easy it to be content in this country. Life's unfair, therefore rebel, hate, steal, rob, be jealous. Don't like this, don't like that. Don't like your gender, don't like your body. Don't like your country. Where our forefathers said, all men are created equal and have been endowed by their creator with the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not cash, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Happiness could also be, for us, it's pursuit of godliness, contentment, the, the um, pursuit of faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, and eternal life, the pursuit of happiness. And yet people, um, it seems con that contentment is nowhere to be found in my country, and even in such a rich country. So, first of all, being rich is not sinful. The Bible says, Paul says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. Command the rich to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command the wealthy to do good, be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Amen. So the key to being content, whether in the Garden of Eden or amongst the children of Israel or in the U.S. of A, is godliness. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Everybody wants to watch the indices go up. Yeah, my retirement fund, my social security fund, my money fund, go up, 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 it's gone nothing but down, down, down. And, you know, we, we, we worry about that and, and so forth. But the Bible says, look, godliness with contentment is great gain. Your indices are up, Christian friends. It's great gain. God has given you his son, the son of God, to make you pure and holy, forgives your sins and to make you think and act more like God himself. God has given you contentment in good times and bad and a worry-free future. Godliness with con contentment. Pursue the gain of those things. And God will, for the sake of his son, make us happy. Well, I guess when Jesus said, you know, you cannot serve both God and money, he, he was saying that, you know, people always uh, serve or love or pursue something in their life. You know, we human beings aren't statues. We're not made out of stone. We're not static. We don't just sit there. We all pursue something. And Jesus invites you to pursue God, because with God, you'll also get money. Jesus says, please don't pursue money, because with money, you won't have God. And so we, by faith in the Holy Spirit, per pursue and trust in God as he feeds us in body, mind, and spirit. It was not with silver or gold that you were redeemed, friends, but with the holy, precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Earlier, 
The Bible said that, you know, rich or poor, we enter the world with nothing and leave the world with nothing. Uh, well, except for Jesus. He entered the world as the Son of God, King of kings and Lord of lords. He entered with all the treasures and richness of God's heart, his love for you, and the, and, and the ability and want to atone for all your sins and eternal life. And he left the world. He ascended. He rose from the dead and ascended in the clouds and happiness with the, the richness of heaven following in his wake. And joyous disciples like us here down below serving and worshiping him. He came with everything. He left with everything. And that includes he's going to leave this world in his church, bring us someday to be with him in heaven. He's going to take us as his own. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that now we can pursue godliness with contentment. Amen.